Everyone go, woo! Amen. It's, it's such a privilege to share God's word with you and to have an encounter with you because we're, we're doing it together, right? We do church as a family, right? Amen? Amen. So I'm going to be continuing on the message of renovation of the mind And I just kind of want to remind you of this whole month and and also remind you that this message was given a year ago, um, this theme, by the Lord as we went away um, to seek God. And so if you're here and it touches you, it's because God said so. Everyone say, God said so. God said so. So this whole month's theme was renovation of the mind. How many of you need your minds renovated at one time or another? Raise your hand. Amen. So um, pastor's first week, he talked about how to love the unlovable. The second week was finding peace in all situations. The third week was overcoming fear. The fourth week was becoming an abundant giver. And he talked about two types of giving, forgiving and giving with a purpose. Amen. So today's um, message is called renovate. Everyone say renovate. And it's renovating using the right tools. And I I just think it's so funny. God is hilarious because for some of you um, know that we are new homeowners. And we've rented the same house for the last 14 years. And November 11th made one year. And so we began kind of this process of renewing our mind that it belongs to us. That no longer if there's something wrong, we can't call the landlord, then they send the plumber over, then they fix it, and they pay for it, and we just cruise. Now, if the plumbing goes out, we fix it. We pay for it. Amen? So God is just kind of renewing us in in that area. It's kind of scary in the sense of how to renovate. And it's funny because Lance and I are kind of hilarious because this is like new for us. I'm like the MacGyver queen. Give me some duct tape and I'll fix it, you know? So the actual right tools, I don't really know. And we have tools in the house, but where it is, is like, oh, I think it's under the kitchen sink. Oh, I think it was in the kids' room. Where's that hammer that has that thing that pulls out the nail? I mean, we're kind of hilarious. We're kind of funny in that. We're like, we should have our own show. I'm sure everyone would check us out, you know? But one of the main things was um, having some place to put the tools. So we were so blessed because on Saturday, some of you know, you saw my mom, and she's back in Florida right now, and she was staying with us. She was here for about a month and a half. And so during that time, there was was a lot going on, and so our renovation was kind of put a little bit on the hold. But we decided to do Thanksgiving Saturday night before before actual Thanksgiving. And we had a beautiful time because mom was here and we had our family here. And you don't see K-Boy because he's actually in Washington right now on a slope somewhere in snow. And so, um, so we decided to have an early Thanksgiving, which meant that we were now introduced to Black Friday. You know, we've never done Black Friday. And, and it's funny, it's, it's called Black Friday, but it starts Thursday. I don't know why. But it starts Thursday at 6 p.m. And so Lance and I, you know, it's funny because Thursday morning, <laughs> Thursday afternoon, he's like, uh, can we get turkey? But we had turkey Saturday, but he wanted turkey because it's Thanksgiving. You know, I'm like, we got leftovers, so I'm making him leftovers. And we decide to go on this journey to Walmart where we see Lance, Walmart man. Everyone wave to him. He's an awesome Walmart man. So we go there and see no one, see, there should be training about Black Friday. No one told us about Black Friday. No one told us how crazy it is. Okay, so we didn't know at Walmart there's like two levels. And if you go to the second level without a cart, you don't have a cart. And then every item you look for, and and it's funny because we were not Christmas shopping, we were house shopping. And so the first item we saw was the, what is it called, honey? The ottoman. The ottoman in white plastic because no one knew it was there. So I stood over that and looking at the ottomans, going, is that for sale? We found out it was $29.99. And we've been looking for ottomans. That day we were at 
Target and it was 176. So the Pake in me was like, buy it now, you know? But we had no cart to put the Ottomans in. So it was hilarious. We were hilarious and we saw Miley and Dale. And we saw some other people there shopping that were professionals that knew about the cart thing. So as we're going by, we saw this enormous toolbox. You know, a toolbox that you can put all your stuff in. And, you know, we need to do that because we don't know where our tools are. <laughs> so we look at the toolbox and, and we're still, people think like we're doing major Christmas shopping, but, you know, it's all about our house and all about us. <laughs> so we see this toolbox and Lance is looking at it. He's actually standing over it, you know, just kind of glazing his eyes or looking at the toolbox. So I think, Merry Christmas, right? I'm like, I'm done. Merry Christmas, right? So we buy this awesome toolbox that he ends up coming home and putting every tool we have. We found out we have tools we didn't know we have. We don't know what they are, but we have them, you know? So with that said, God also has um, this incredible toolbox. It's called the ultimate toolbox. Everyone say the ultimate toolbox. It's called the Bible. And with, with this toolbox, we have every tool imaginable for life. He put it all in one place. <laughs> he must have known we would lose it, you know, if he had it in different places like us. But he put it all in one place. So we're going to talk about the tools that God gives us, the right tools that he gives us. And we're going to open up with the scripture that's been all month. And I'm going to ask you to read it with me, to follow with your notes. I'm going to count to three and you're going to read it with me. It's an amazing thing. You're going to love it. Okay, so one, two, three. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So it's so cool. You know, I looked up that word workmanship, and I think it's funny because it's pronounced poi ma. Like poi ma. I need poi. It's called poi ma. And this word actually translates of the works of God, our creator. Think about that for a minute, that we're his workmanship, each and every one of you that you are not an accident, that you were created in design, that who you are, just like Evan, he's a musician, he's a singer, he loves the Lord. God created him. He crafted him. He said, this is my son. I'm going to make him paka back there. He's my drummer. He's going to be placing those beats back there, and he's kind, and he's loving, and he's someone you can depend on. He created grandma back there to start a legacy of lovers of Christ. See, he created us, and if you think about that for just a minute, you'll be in awe. Because sometimes we separate ourselves from God, and yet he said, I created you for good works. I created you. You are my workmanship. And God doesn't make junk, guys. He makes masterpieces. We just sometimes don't know that. Sometimes we don't look at ourselves as that, and we don't even see ourselves as the Father creating us. Isn't that crazy when you think about that? It's so awesome. So he created in Christ Jesus for good works. Everyone say good works. Good works. Say not junk works, but good works. So he created us for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So like any house... Because, you know, we're a house. God calls us kind of the tent, the house, you know. After years of weather, circumstances, situations, we need to renovate, right? Just like our house, it's funny because we don't, can I tell them this? I'm going to tell them anyway. So, <laughs> oh, sorry, because I have the power now. Usually he's here asking me. So, so there is our two back sliding doors. And because of the rain over the years, the glass is falling down. So there's like this space in between. So Lance went and got this piece of wood and painted it and put it there. Looks brand new. It looks like it's, it's like never, ever had a problem. And it was for the purpose of we recently got air conditioning to keep the air in. But we know 
that those doors need to be replaced without, without a question. Or else eventually that glass is going to go boom. Just like us, sometimes life hits us. Sometimes we're weathered. Sometimes we're falling apart. And sometimes we just kind of band-aid stuff. But God says, no, man, I need to renovate my creation. This is not how I made you to be. This is not where you are is not where I set up for you to be. So today we're going to use, we're going to renovate. And renovate is to restore to good condition, make new as if new again, repair, reinvigorate, which means to revitalize, to stimulate, to energize, to refresh and revive. How many of you need to be renovated? Raise your hand. Amen. I'm, I'm getting excited here. So we're ready for renovation. If you say yes, say amen. 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 So we're going to start with God's renovation process with this scripture, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 19. It says this, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not in putting the trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. I know that was a whole lot to swallow, but we're going to break it down. Everyone say break it down. So we're going to be using, we're going to renovate our minds through this morning with eight tools in to renovate using the acronym, the word renovate. So the first tool is the R in renovate, and you're going to be filling in that blank. R is for restore what was broken, that we would be reconciled, and how, that we would be reconciled. So how do we do that? Simple scripture, John 3.16. Most of you have memorized it. And if you've not, this is a great scripture to memorize. It's for God so loved the world. If you know it, say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, the bridge to God was broken by sin. Sin entered the world through your belief, say my belief, in Jesus. That bridge, which is Jesus, allows us to become reconciled once again to God. So being restored, the R and renovate is, you need to first start there. We start right there. Being restored, that bridge that was Jesus. When he went like this, that was the bridge for you to cross. You got it? If you got it, say I got it. So he was the bridge, and then he, his whole goal was that we would be reconciled back to the Father. We'd be reconciled, amen? Amen. So now the second tool is the E in renovate, and it's to evaluate and educate. Say evaluate and educate. So Philippians 4.11, this is Paul speaking, and he's writing a letter to the Philippians. And this was during his first imprisonment. Now, Paul learned to be content in all circumstances. Imagine now, he's writing this in prison, okay? His joy was not connected to material needs. He found his sufficiency in Christ Jesus, his peace and his purpose he could enjoy regardless, everyone say regardless, of life circumstances. I want you to read this with me, okay? One, two, and three. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I've learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul had to evaluate his situation and his circumstances, and he learned. He learned to be content through Christ. Sometimes it's hard, man. It's hard to be content when you're going through trials and you're going through health, you're going through loss. But Paul is saying and is encouraging the people that there's a way 
to be content with having very little or having an abundance. That's through evaluating and educating. So R was restore and reconcile. E is evaluate and educate. Now the next is in renovate is the N. It's navigate a plan to start. Everyone say start. start. So we all should have our own navigational chart that consists of three areas. That's your body, your soul, and your spirit. You see, we're comprised. The great creator said, I'm going to give them a body, a soul, and a spirit. Each one of you have that. Say, I got that. Okay, so the Father gave us all that at the very beginning. So in having all three, you need to tend to all three. So in order to renovate, the first area you're going to start with is your body. So you're going to tend to your physical health. That means if you got to change, like you ate 100 pies last week. I don't know if that was you. He was kind of looking at me when he said that. But if you're eating, watch what you're eating. If you need exercise, then hey, Go and do exercise, whatever you can do. There's something crazy about going out in nature and being around creation that makes you feel better. Or the sun shining on your body that gives you that natural vitamin D. It's important that we take care of our body and we start and we make a plan to do that. Because if we don't make a plan, it ain't happening, right? Amen. So the next thing is your soul. Now your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Everyone say that with me. My mind, my will, and my emotions. Well, this is my title deed scripture, and it's Philippians 4.8, and it talks about meditating. And this meditation is not like, um, it's not that kind of meditating. Actually, this word meditating translates to like how a cow eats, and it goes to one stomach, then another, and another, and it's about chewing on something over and over and over and over again. But this is what he says in this, what he wants you to meditate on. He says, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, just, pure, lovely, of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. You see, we have to meditate on the things that are good, the things that are praiseworthy, the things that are just. It's important to praise God for those things because guess where depression comes from? Meditating on what? On what is not right, what is not good. It's funny because, you know, I've been, I've been taking care of my mom. She's visiting, and God gave me this, this picture of us all in the garden this morning. And, like, the garden must have humongous mangoes, papayas, everything, like everything, but it was this one tree that we wanted to eat. But there was, like, a whole, like, huge fruit basket there. But the focus was on what we couldn't have instead of what we already had. Amen? So God wants us to be able to meditate on the things that we have, the things that God is doing. Amen? So navigate on your body, make a plan, your soul meditating on the positive, not the negative. And then the next thing you need to navigate is your spirit. Say, my spirit. Okay, so your spirit is a real deal, guys. It's not like, oh, this weird thing that's inside of you. It's actually God created in you so that you could commune with him, your spirit. So there's a, there's a way that you navigate your spirit to be well, and that's by feeding your spirit. That's like reading your word daily. That's going to Bible studies. That's visiting friends that... Um, fellowshipping with them, talking about the things that God has done, like saying, hey, man, guess what God did today? That, that stirs with inside of you, your spirit, that makes you well, that navigates you to the place. It's important. You're important. Just like Davy said, that you're important to God. And so you being well is important, but you got to put the navigational chart. You got to navigate and start. Amen. Say amen. Are you still here with me? Okay, amen. Just checking. Okay, so the next point is the O in renovate, and it's options. Write that down, options. 
Ask God what are the best options. How many of you saw the movie War Room? If you saw, man, if you did not see that, man, I would encourage you to go and see that movie. It's an incredible movie that talks about the power of prayer. So options. The scripture is, but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Options. I um, called my, my mom this morning, and I asked her if I could share this with all of you to get her permission. Um, it's been hard. You know, my, um, my mom's 85. And the last time I saw her, she was very mobile and very, you know, she could put up a good fight, you know. <laughs> she was really good. And this time around, things were very different. The picture had changed. And I had been, she had been staying with me at part of the time. And, and I was, everything was just really hard. And I was running out of options. <laughs> So um, I, after actually, I have a confession. After watching War Room, I went and turned my closet into my war room. <laughs> I was laughing. I know some of you did, so no act. I know you did that too. So, so I had been um, going in there and journaling in the morning, and it was the Thursday prior to the Sunday. And when God, you know, what happens when I'm in that time, usually what I do is I sit there and I pray, and then I write my concerns on my journal. So I wrote, mom, question mark. Like, what do I do, Lord? Like, I don't know what to do anymore, Lord. I'm not sure how to do this, Lord. And then the Lord gave me a word to love her, to encourage her, to dream with her, to take care of her, to just love her, you know? And then I wrote after that, will she be okay and then I got this funny note that says, yes, of course. Like, hello, who am I talking to? Who are you? You know? And it was like, yes, of course. I made her to move mountains. Ask her about her grandmother and what is it about courage? Okay, so I wrote all this. This is on a Thursday, but a lot of times when I write, I don't remember what I wrote because it's like God's leading you. So Sunday morning... I'm getting ready for our CR class at our house, and I go into my prayer room, and I read it, and I see it. So I go into the room, and my mother's laying on the bed, and she hasn't slept really for a month and a half thoroughly. Every 10 minutes, she's waking up to go to the bathroom. She's been fighting this infection for a long time. She's sight impaired. She's deaf in one ear. She can't walk. Um, there's all kinds of stuff going on, and I read this. So I go in the room, and I sit with her, and then I said, Mom, I, I was praying, and I forgot that I wrote this, and, and God told me that, yes, of course, you're going to move mountains, and you move mountains, Mom, and, you know, my mom's feeling physically like there is, like the mountains on her, like she ain't going to move no mountains, you know, and so then I tell her that the Lord said to ask you about grandma, and what did she say? Well, my mother then begins to tell me the story that at the age of eight, she was baptized in Kualoa, and that my grandmother, Marie, Anna Marie Juanita, something, 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 um, was a Pentecostal preacher. And that when she was a little girl, she would tell her that she had to go with her, and she always questioned her, why me, Grandma, why me? Why don't you take Ellie? She's older. Well, the reason why my mom didn't want to go with my grandmother was because my grandmother would go into Chinatown, get her substance, her poi, her whatever, but then she would go to Aala Park, and she would collect people that were drunk laid out on the ground. So she would basically go to them and tell them, get up and get in my car, and they would listen. Well, in the back seat was my mom who was scared of the drunken, stinking man, so she didn't want to go. But then she said what would happen then is she would take them back to Kualoa and there was a shower there and she would have towels and she would say, go take a bath. Just like that. Go take a bath. They would go take a bath. Then she said, come sit down, eat. They would come sit down, eat. 
And I remember they were drunk and passed out. So they're just like following her like little sheep. And then they would sit down and then grandpa at the end of the table would read the word. When the, he would be power read the word, grandma would walk around behind them, lay hands on them, and they would get slain in the spirit on the ground. Boom. I mean, everyone say boom. I mean, it was like boom. They would be on the ground. Mom said that they would then sit up. They joined the church. They were converted just like that. Just like that. They became new members of the church. And so then I asked my mom, so, so what was it? Why you, mom? Why you then? You asked that question. You said, grandma never answered you. Why you? And she said, well, because it missed a generation, and then you picked it up. And I said, Mom, it's in our DNA, right? It is in our DNA. It's generation to generation to generation. If you are a worshiper, then worship every generation. If you are a singer, then sing. If you're hospitality, then serve, right? It's in our DNA. So I told my mom, who's, who's like feeling like I'm not going to make it, Mom, it is in your DNA, you need to pray for me. Hello. So that morning, after sharing that word, I said, Mom, it's in your DNA. I said, growing up, Mom, when you taught us, we never went to church. She just, I just knew that she knew God. And I was scared. Like, God would tell her when I was naughty. Like, I was scared. I was, I was a panty. I was scared. You know, I was like, oh, no, man, we can't do that, honey girl, because she's going to know, you know? So my mom had it in there. She knew. She put the love of Christ in me. And I said, mom, it's in your DNA. God said, you're going to move mountains, and of, of course you're going to be okay, mom. She began to pray. She began to speak over me. She began to speak over my sister. And now this is someone who all night long was, I don't know if I'm going to make it. She had to stir that up, the options. God's going to give you options. You, you don't know the answer, go into your prayer room. Go and pray. God's going to show you something I would have never known that. Only God knew that. I didn't know that. When I shared it with my mom, it was like all of a sudden, because my mom tells me this. She goes, you may be the mother of the church, but you ain't my mother. Well, she tells me that sometimes. So in that, she knew it was God speaking. Amen? Amen. So God is good. Everyone say God is good. good. Okay. So renovate. Now we're going to do the V in renovate, and it's vacate unhealthy situations. Vacate unhealthy situations. Guys, you got to move out of that situation, that circumstance. Right? Right? You can't stay in a place that's not healthy. God wants to give you an upgrade. He wants to renovate. But if you say, I ain't going to move, then nothing's going to move. Amen? Amen? The scripture says, therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Guys, you got to be real. If you're in a place, man, you got to be real. If you're in a place that's keeping you locked up, it's time to vacate. It's time to get out of there. If you need help, you need support, that's what the church is. That's what family is. Amen? Amen. 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 So going on. So we got R is restore and reconcile. E is what? Evaluate and educate. N is navigate a plan, body, soul, and spirit. O is options. Pray to God. Ask him, what are the options, Lord? What do I need to do? V is vacate unhealthy situations. Now the A is applaud every breakthrough and blessing. Amen? Amen. Give God a clap right now. Amen? Amen. Man, you got to applaud every breakthrough and blessing. The scripture says, I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. You see, guys, giving God the glory is what it's about. 
being able to praise God and give him applause and say, man, guess what God did today? Guess what happened? Like, man, I, I want to share, right? We need to applaud God. We applaud so many other crazy things that are not worth clapping for. Amen? He wants the glory. He deserves the glory, right? Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So T and renovate is take time and be patient. Tell your neighbor, take time. Be patient. The renovation's happening. Yeah? Take time and be patient. Romans 12, 12, Paul talks to us on how to accomplish that. This is a great scripture. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continually steadfasting in prayer. I, doesn't it sound like a rap? It does, right? Okay, you guys ready? Okay, here we go. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continually steadfastly in prayer. Hanaho, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. There it is. There it is, right there, right? There it is. Those three things right there. Take time and be patient in your renovation process, guys. You know, sometimes we want it to happen like right now. It's like my, my mom was, was sharing that she hadn't been sleeping and she, she, fought, she got on the plane. And it's so nuts because we were so concerned about her making her destination. And she gets there. But there's, there's always something, there's always something that can go wrong, right? There's always something. And so I was telling her, I was talking to her on her phone, and she was saying, I'm like, okay, so mom, did you sleep last night? She's like, oh, yeah, I slept, but da 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 I go, you slept? Woohoo! I had like a big party on the phone. She couldn't even talk. I was like, you slept, mom. You slept. That was our prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You slept, mom. You're going to, she's like, oh, yeah, but I didn't do, I go, but mom, praise the Lord. Applaud him for that. Man, because, you know, we, we spend so much time as we finally get our prayer request, and then we find something else to be bummered about, Right? Instead of taking the time to applaud the Lord, right? Giving him the praise, right? we got to do that, man. That's part of the renovation process. If we don't do that, then the enemy will steal it. He will steal your praise. He will steal your joy. Amen. So the last letter in renovate is E for elevate. I like that word, elevate. Everyone say elevate. So we need to elevate everything back to God. Amen. The scripture says, rise up and shine for your light has come. The shining greatness of the Lord has risen upon you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. We need to elevate everything back to God. We need to be his living sacrifice, not his dead sacrifice, guys. His living. You're alive. Say, I'm alive. As long as you have breath, Man, you're a living sacrifice. You can serve him. You can help others in that process. So we are God's workmanship personally, individually, created by God for good works. Amen? Each one of us are in need of a renovation. We agree. Say amen. 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 So God is the journalman, our creator. We are his apprentice and his lifetime renovation project. Pastor's been talking about that, that he's not done with us yet. Amen? Aren't you glad he's not done? Right? So right now he's begun a good work. And the scripture says that he will be faithful to finish what he's begun. So I'm, I'm going to ask you guys to, to bow your heads in prayer with me. With no one looking around. And if you are in agreement of this prayer, I'm going to ask you to raise your hands at the very end, and we're going to pray for you. 
So Father, Lord, we just commit first, Lord, to being under your renovation. Father, we cry out to you, Lord, and for those who may have not received you yet, we pray that you restore what was broken, that we would be reconciled back to you. Forgive us of our sins, Lord. I believe that you sent your son for us, that we would be restored and reconciled back to you. Help us, Lord, to educate and evaluate daily, being content in all circumstances. Help us to navigate our plan daily, to deal with our body that may be aging, may stuff's just happening, Lord. Help us to make smart decisions about it. For our soul, Lord, help us to meditate on what is good, what is lovely, what is just, what is noble, and not on what is not, Lord. We seek out, Lord, in prayer, the options you have for us, Lord, that it would be not our way, but your way, Lord, the best way. Give us the strength today, Lord, to vacate unhealthy situations. Let us not forget to applaud you, Lord, for every breakthrough and blessing you give us. Help us to take the time needed, Lord. Show us where that time is while being patient through the process. Lastly, Lord, we elevate everything back to you. So I pray this morning, Lord, with every head bowed and every eye closed. If this is your prayer, with no one looking around, with no fussing around or wondering what everybody else is doing, if you feel God's calling you for a restoration, a renovation, with no one looking around, I just want you to raise your hand. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you back there. I see you. Anyone else? I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you back there and right there. I see you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm just going to wait another minute. I'm just going to wait another minute. If any of these areas in that renovate that you're lacking right now and you need that extra energy, you need to stir that up within you, I want you to raise your hand as well. I see you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise your holy and mighty name, Father. We accept you, Lord, as our Lord and Savior, Lord. And Father, Lord, we just lay down, Lord, our our plans, Lord, our blueprint to yours, Lord. We ask that you would have your way, Lord. Help us to walk in this, Lord. Help us to remember the things of you, Lord. Empower your church. Empower our families, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that it is in our DNA that you created us to be worshipers, Lord. You created us to be victorious. Lord, we thank you. We want to be more like you. Help us to renovate in your image, Lord. And we thank you, we honor you, and we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.